who have an equally formidable task in the shape of corruption that we need to weed out. It is in this context that I stand on this podium and I want to engage the attention of our youth to partner with NAB in its fight against corruption. <laughs> Thus the title of today's seminar, Role of Youth in Eradication of Corruption. Because I sincerely feel that you are the ones who can be most effective in taking the anti-corruption message to your homes to begin with, to your streets, to your localities, and create the desired disdain against corruption. What you do today will reflect in the society tomorrow. If we all come forward to build a corruption-free society, then our dream of a strong Pakistan is not far away. Ladies and gentlemen, the perception that corruption is the main cause of trouble prevails around the world. It badly affects the state of economy, standards of living and social justice. Corruption eats up the innocence of people Indeed, it is no longer a national matter, but a transnational phenomenon that affects all societies and economies throughout the world. If a country wants to achieve sustained socio-economic development with healthy foreign investments, corruption must be eliminated at all costs. The ill effects of the menace of corruption have become one of the greatest challenges that all countries are confronted with. However, the advanced countries or the developed countries have managed in reducing its size and scope to a minimum level through sustainable measures like building institutions. And yet, it is quite rampant in developing countries. Where again, I think it boils down to the institutions not being strong enough. The unnecessary and wrongful use of power and position by those with authority in the government or non-government setups all share the part of the blame. Ladies and gentlemen, as head of Pakistan's anti-corruption agency, it is important for me to share my organization's efforts for eradication of corruption. I'm happy to mention that National Accountability Bureau has been consistently engaging with all stakeholders in the fight against corruption in order to uproot the evil from the society. Now, NAB works on a three-pronged strategy to weed out corruption, which consists of awareness, prevention and enforcement. And we firmly believe that any single prong cannot give the desired results. We have laid great stress on awareness and prevention. NAB has taken a lead in establishing a pathway for effectively combating corruption in the system. Under the awareness slash education drive, 
thousands of character building societies have been established in educational institutions all over the country for sensitizing our future leadership against corruption. The awareness or education campaign against corruption, oblique corrupt practices has been intensified by the Bureau, particularly during the last three years. Seminars, lectures, and events have been held for educating the youth about the negative impacts of corruption on society. Our motto is, say no to corruption. It has been disseminated successfully through various platforms, through the electronic media, print media, seminars, printing it on the national ID cards now, the driving licenses of all the provinces also carry this motto, and the ATM machines are also displaying the motto of say no to corruption. This is a part of that awareness or education drive, as I said. The national cricket and hockey teams are our brand ambassadors. NAB is closely working with the Ministry of Federal Education for incorporating anti-corruption theme in the curriculum from class one to class 10. We have already signed an MOU with the Higher Education Commission of Pakistan, and under the MOU, NAB and HSE are taking joint, undertaking joint efforts for sensitizing the youth against corruption. In the anti-corruption efforts, prevention regime is another effective tool to combat corruption through stopping misuse of authority at an early stage, that is, before the corrupt act actually happens. As already pointed out here, NAB is mandated under Section 33 of the NEO to form prevention committees for suggesting amendments in rules, regulations, in order to prevent corruption and corrupt practices in government departments. Because most of the time, it has been seen that only because of procedural rigmaroles, the common man is frustrated to the extent <clears throat> that he might as well give a bribe for getting a job done because he's not able to, able to overcome that procedural lengthy system evolved actually to which leads to corruption. So NAB under the prevention regime is undertaking an examination of the raw laws and rules of those ministries and departments particularly who are more in touch with the common man. For example, the Education Ministry, Health Ministry, and the Religious Affairs Ministry. We have set up co prevention committees, and those prevention committees have prepared their recommendations, which have already been forwarded. In the Health Ministry, we constituted nine subcommittees under the various subheadings of the drugs, the practitioners, the stockers, the pharmacists. So nine sub such committees, subcommittees were constituted. And I must say, uh, the DRAP, the Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan, which also had some cumbersome procedures that also came under the focus. And through those recommendations, the present minister and the hierarchy of the health ministry 
they have actually thanked us because those recommendations have now been put into practice. I must for your information also say, and it's a measure of uh, satisfaction for us as well, that we constituted a prevention committee on the affairs of the Ministry of Religious Affairs, because as you would recall, there was a time period when the Hajj Ministry was plagued with a lot of difficulties, and actually those difficulties, the ministry may not have fa been faced, but it is the poor Hajis who were faced with those miseries and difficulties. And then in the recent years, we undertook and we formed a committee on the Religious Affairs Ministry, its procedures, it, the way it conducts its business. I may inform you that uh, we have a good role, alhamdulillah, in uh, the very good arrangements as have been accepted by the hajis at large for the hajj arrangements, particularly this year and even the year preceding it. And we were in very close collaboration with the Ministry of Religious Affairs and I can safely say that some of those recommendations have come to the good avail of the Ministry of Religious Affairs and consequently the hajis. This is general, uh, generally you know, being talked about this year that the hajj went off very smoothly. So such are the measures under the prevention committees that we form. Some departments like the CDA, the cooperatives, the police, these recommendations are also in the, in, the, in, the, in the preparation and we do hope the cooperatives uh, measures have already been even sent to the Ministry of Interior and we do feel that these prevention committees which comprise of the practitioners, the concerned ministries, the uh, eminent citizens, the specialists, in those affairs, and they do it in a very, very exhaustive manner. And that's how those recommendations which are formulated with the presence of those concerned ministries and officials, they become a part of this extension process and thereby they are then better placed to go and implement them in their respective organizations. Now, the third field, that is the enforcement, and in that, this has actually been what has been more associated with NAB in the past. Enforcement is the typical inquiry, the investigation, the pakar dakar, and all the connected matters with it. And then finally, after the investigation process, the matter is taken in the shape of a reference to the accountability court and that also of course constitutes a very important part of our work because there are cases where a strong deterrence is required and enforcement regime is the one which provides that deterrence. I may inform you that uh, the consolidated conviction rate in the courts is a solid 76% for the first nine months of 2016, which for white collar crime is, mashallah, uh, a, a very well appreciated uh, percentage of conviction because uh, white collar crime starting and leading to debates in the courts are matters which require a lot of hard work. And I must congratulate the NAB officials, the concerned prosecutors, who have worked hard to reach this level of competence. Ladies and gentlemen, these efforts have started bearing results, both at home and abroad. Due to the Bureau's efforts, build that. This is Pakistan's eminent NGO, which is Pakistan Institute of Legislative Development and Transparency, 
the Transparency International Berlin, Michal, a home-based uh, organization, and the World Economic Forum have appreciated. The PILDAT has rated NAB higher in public confidence when survey has been conducted in comparison with the FIA, police, and government offices. Ra NAB has been rated at a much better percentage of public opinion. Alhamdulillah. It's also a matter of uh, satisfaction for we all as a country that in its report of 2015 by the Transparency International Berlin, it has placed Pakistan at 117th position out of 175 countries of the world. This has been the best position achieved by Pakistan since Transparency International starting, started issuing its CPI ratings since 1995.